Good morning from the Hawaiian Eye Conference on the Big Island of Hawaii. We're pleased to be here with Dr. Frank Bucci from Wilkes-Barre, PA. Thanks a lot, Frank, for being with us today. My pleasure. We're in, we're in Hawaii. We're in Hawaii. It, be, it beats being back east. So um, I want to talk to you this morning about a really interesting study and an interesting set of data that you've presented at this meeting about multifocal implants and about various different ads of technus multifocals. Can you explain that study for us, please? Well, uh, in my presentation, I compared the patient satisfaction results for three different combinations, either bilateral 4-0, bilateral 325, or mixing a 325 with a symphony. So we, my uh, research model involves um, multiple variant regression, which, which wants to achieve not only showing the levels of satisfaction for the patients, but why they're satisfied. So the dependent variable was overall patient satisfaction, and that was regressed against 40 other variables. Uh, nine of the variables were the answers to questionnaires about their intermediate, near, and uh, far vision. And the other was all the matrix you could think of, uh, their visual outcomes, their reading speed, their reading accuracy, uh, angle kappa, and uh, higher order aberrations. And it sounds like, Frank, based on the data that, that you've presented, it sounds like that with the higher ad groups, those groups had less intermediate function than the lower ad groups, which, which adds to, uh, to some of what we already know about the difference between high and low ad multifocals. Right, that's, that's true. The, the 4040 combination with a focal point at about 14 inches, in general, had lower scores for intermediate vision. One caveat to that is that the regression analysis identified that mesopic pupil size preoperatively was a meaningful predictor of postoperative intermediate vision. So those patients with the 4040 who had small pupils had the advantage of having that great near, but also had good intermediate. Mm -hmm. Those with average and larger pupils did not have as good as intermediate as, again, eventually compared to the bilateral 325s. It's interesting that you mentioned that, Frank. Why is it that people with smaller pupil size may have a, a greater range of vision with multifocal or extended depth of uh, focus lenses? In my opinion, it has to do with the design of the, of the family of Tectus multifocal lenses. Not the Symphony, but the 275, the 325, and the 40. They have a central uh, one millimeter zone, which is actually half the power of the ad. So it's really a, a great multifocal optic. So as the pupil gets smaller, the, the percentage of light going through that one millimeter zone increases. And we, it's my opinion that that's how, you know, that's, that's the optics behind why we see better intermediate vision. And mm -hmm. the regression also showed, even in the 325 uh, bilateral patients, and the, and with the focal point moving back from 14 to 17, didn't wash out that effect. They, those patients also still had better intermediate beyond the improved intermediate they, they had uh, shown anyway. So do you think then, Frank, that we can use um, pupil size as one of the parameters that we, that we, that we use to help choose uh, uh, the multifocal or EDOF lens that would be most appropriate uh, in each patient scenario? I think it's a very powerful uh, preoperative uh, tool uh, for... Uh, I, I, I published on the 4.0 about four years ago. It wasn't widely publicized, and I kept telling uh, surgeons, this is a very powerful tool preoperatively to sit. You know, it's, it's difficult to make presbyopic patients happy anyway. You know, we're, we're dealing with all these variables related to the multifocal lenses and the EDF lenses. To have that extra tool to look at preoperative uh, uh, pupil size and be able to predict what their intermediate vision is an extremely powerful tool uh, for those three lenses. And now uh, my go-to combination now is a Symphony and a 325 most of the time, um, uh, with the exception here. It's an interesting exception. So I put the 325 in first in a patient with small pupils. They're going to get good near and very good intermediate. So now I'm selecting the lens for the second eye. I really maybe not going to use a Symphony because I'm going to give away a little bit near. I would normally use a Symphony to improve the intermediate but I'm gonna get great intermediate anyway because of the small pupil. So I, those patients end up being bilateral 325s. That, that makes good, good sense, Frank. What, what about, you mentioned the 275 ad lens also. How does that play into some of your decision making uh, in that kind of scenario? Again, my opinion with that is that uh, the 275 has a focal point out about 20 inches. 
Anytime I'm thinking of using a 275, I think it's smart to just replace it with a Symphony. Mm -hmm. Because the Symphony is gonna give you a focal point about the same place. Uh, the higher order aberrations might be a little bit less. I think you're gonna get, and then you're gonna get that added benefit in the distance because it neutralizes chromatic aberration and it's the only lens that does that. And my data did show better distance even when we only used one Symphony. So with bilateral data, Symphony and 325, there was significantly better distance vision than two 325s, which was, had pretty good distance to start with. So that's why I would always use a Symphony if I'm contemplating using a 275. Well, Frank, this has been a great discussion for us this morning about the various different ad powers of the Technus family, and your data are very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise today. My, my, my pleasure, Jonathan. Thank you.